Whoever. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Reading Bug. We have another very special story time today. Miss Riley's going to read a story for you. Um, before we start, we'll do our stretching song, and then we have an extra special song for you this morning. It's a kindness song to go along with our kindness story time, and it'll be featured in our Reading Bug Adventures podcast episode starting next week. And you'll also find a full version of this song on Twitter. And where else did we put it today? And on our website at readingbugadventures.com. No. With our kindness books. With our kindness books <laughs> on thereadingbug.com. So if you go to scroll down to the bottom of our page at thereadingbug.com, you'll find all of our recommendations. And at the top of the kindness books, you'll find that song as well. All right, are you ready? Let's stretch up high first and do our stretching song. This is quite a pile of children. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Ready? Stretch, stretch up, up high, high, touch the sky, crouch down low and wiggle your toes. Swing your arms from side to side. Now we're ready to go. One more time. Stretch up high, touch the sky, crouch down low and wiggle your toes. Swing your arms from side to side. Now we're ready to go. Very good. All right, here we go. So this song was written by me, Brandon Savage, and Diane Savage, and we are very excited to share it with you. And the music is by Dan Schoen. Okay, here we go. I don't remember the song we wrote, so we have to look at it at the same time. Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. If I had one wish that would make me care for you, I'd spread kindness across the land and over the sea. It makes people feel good to see a smile, not a frown. Simple acts of kindness feel good when you're down. So be kind. Rewind. You'll find it's easy to be a friend. Cherish one another and always be kind. Lead with your heart and think with your mind. Find some solutions where you can agree. Make room in the world where we can just be. So be nice and be nice. Be nice. Think twice. Think twice. You'll find your kindness. So spread. So spread some love. Some love around. Recall the golden rule and do unto others as they do unto you. Don't speak out in anger, take a breath and start again. To love and understand is what it takes to be a friend, so be kind. Be kind. Rewind. Rewind. You'll find it's easy to be, to be a friend. Oh. And always be kind Lead with your heart And think with your mind Don't speak out in anger Take a breath and start again To love and understand Is what it takes to be a friend So be nice, be nice. Think twice So again, you can listen to that song. You'll find it at the top of our kindness uh, books on our website at thereadingbug.com. You can find our full song and description of our podcast coming up on Twitter. Uh, find us on the find the Reading Bug there. And let's start some books, shall we? Riley, would you like to start with yours? Uh, sure. Okay, I'm going to get out of your way. And you can read this one. Jack, okay. you want to sit with her? 
Okay, come on over here. Sit right there. Can they see it? They can see it. Yeah. What was the title? Oh. Kindness Counts. Why is it so hard to flip pages? <laughs> Ten. Ten cookies on a plate. Ready to be delivered. Nine. Nine wild uh, flowers picked, picked with care to make a, a sad face smile. Seven. Oh. You missed eight. Yep, I missed eight. <laughs> there we go. Eight toys to share so everyone can have a turn to play. Seven uh, plushies on this. Pushes. Pushes. <laughs> Seven pushes on the swing to send your sister flying. Six cans for the food pantry to help those who are hungry. Five books to read with your brother when bedtime's nearly here. Four. Four happy paws and a wagging tail when it's time to play outside. Three, sh three. three short wor words for grandma and grandpa so they don't feel so far away. Look, they made their own. Why? Because they did. So they could talk to each other. Yeah, they can talk now. Two, two careful feet, stepping over ants, marching back to their hill. Why? Because you don't want to step on ants. <laughs> one act of kind, one, one act of kindness can go a long way. Uh, what's the first kind thing you'll do today? Good. Okay. All right, let's go on to our next story. Uh, can you move that way, Jackers, for me? Mm -hmm. Move that way. Thanks, Riley. Is there any other book that I would be reading for? You're good. Okay. Fine. Thank you. All right. Another kindness book today we've got is called Be Kind. This is by Pat Zeitlow Miller, who's written some of our other favorite books too, Sophie's Squash um, and many others. Tanisha spilled grape juice yesterday all over her new dress. Everyone laughed. I almost did too, but my mom always tells me, try to be kind. So I tried. Please don't take your piece. I don't think it worked. I said, purple is my favorite color. I thought Tanisha would smile, but she ran into the hall instead. When she came back, snack time was over. She put her art smock on and didn't talk, talk to anyone. I almost told Tanisha that my art was my favorite class, but I didn't want her to leave again. So I painted purple splotches and added some, some green until I had a bunch of beautiful violets. While I painted, I thought about Tanisha. Should I have handed her my napkin? Let her borrow my sweatshirt? Spilled my juice so everyone stared at me instead? What does it mean to be kind anyway? Maybe it's giving. Making cookies for Mr. Rinaldi who lives all alone. Letting someone with smaller feet have my too tight shoes. He might win races in them too. Maybe it's helping. Putting dirty dishes in the sink. Cleaning up after Otis, our class guinea pig. He's a messy eater. Maybe it's paying attention. Telling Desmond I like his blue boots. Asking the new girl to be my partner. Listening to Aunt Franny's stories, even the ones I've heard before. Being kind should be easy. Like throwing away a wrapper or recycling a bottle. Or saying, thank you, bless you. Hey, Carla. What's new, Omar? Good afternoon, Rabbi Mandelbaum. My mom says the quickest way to be kind is to use people's names. Being kind can be hard too, even when you know what to do. Teaching someone something, teaching someone something good, I'm, <laughs> what's going on? Oh, okay, he's okay, yeah. <laughs> teaching someone something I'm good at is tricky, even when I'm patient. And sticking up for someone when some other kids are kind isn't really hard. And it's really scary. Okay, Mr. Man, come on, why don't you put your feet up? Maybe I can't solve Tanisha's grape juice problem. Maybe all I can do is sit by her in art class and paint this picture for her because I know she likes purple too. Maybe I can only do small things, but my small things might join small things that other people do. 
and together they could grow into something big. Something really big. So big that all our kindnesses spill out of our school and spread throughout the town. I don't want to see this book. Okay, I'll do the next one in just a minute. I know you want to do the next book. Travel across the country and go all the way around the world. Right back to Tanisha and me. So we can be kind again and again and again. The end. And that's Be Kind by Pat Zeitlow Miller. All right, let's go on to our next book. I'm going to read Mixed again today because it's my favorite. Mixed, a colorful story. We read this yesterday, so you can see yesterday's too if you want to, or the day before maybe. I don't know what day it is this week. Okay. Does anybody know what day it is this week? Don't think so. School's almost over though, huh? Okay, Jackers. In the beginning, there were three colors, yellows, reds, and blues. Reds were the loudest. La, 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 la. Yellows were the brightest. And blues were the coolest. Everyone lived in color harmony until one afternoon when a red said, reds are the best. The yellows disagreed. No, we're the best because we're the brightest. The blues were too cool to even respond. The colors decided to live in separate parts of the city. But then one day, a yellow noticed a blue and something happened. I feel so happy when I'm near you and I feel so calm when I'm with you. Yellow and blue became inseparable. Life felt so vibrant but not all the colors were happy about it. Hmm, colors shouldn't mix. I don't like yellow's effect on blue. That blue isn't bright enough for yellow. But yellow and blue loved each other so much, they decided to mix. Together, they created a new color. They named her green. Green was bright like yellow and calm like blue but really she was a color all her own. Everyone was fascinated. Even the grumpy colors fell in love with green. She's so cute. I've never seen anything like her before. Can I hold her? The colors began to see new possibilities. Some other colors mixed and mixed and mixed and mixed. There were so many new colors and a lot of new names. Be careful, Jade. Don't forget your glasses, Lavender. Have fun, Amber. The old neighborhoods of Redville, Bluetown, and Yellow Heights didn't make any sense anymore. Everyone wanted to live together, so they rebuilt the city. The city was full of color. It wasn't perfect, but it was home. The end. And that's Mixed, a colorful story by Ari Chung. All right, that's on our, our uh, inclusion and diversity list that you can find at the bottom of our page at thereadingbug.com, along with many of these other books that we're reading today. And then we have this really cute little book just came out called Piglet. By Caitlin Aronson. On a farm in France, Piglet arrived last in her litter and dainty as a daisy. The seventh, said her mother. Perfection. But life on the farm wasn't a perfect fit for Piglet. Nothing piggish seemed to please her. She snorted at her slop. P-U, persnickety, said her brothers. While the others played, Piglet pampered herself. Prissy, said her sisters. So sometimes she escaped to the one place she preferred, the pasture. There in the open air, she closed her eyes and breathed deeply, catching the scents of the trees and blossoms. She memorized the perfume of every posy she picked, Lily, lilac, lavender, rose, and spent hours making crowns of flowers. It came as no surprise when one day a pungent pickup piqued her curiosity. Piglet packed her bags. She kissed her family farewell and departed for Paris. The seventh, her mother sobbed. Perfection. Paris, whispered Piglet. What will I do here? Who will I be? Piglet the poet, Piglet the painter, Piglet the pastry chef. Perfectly pleasant pastimes, but Piglet sensed she had something more in store. 
that's when she happened upon the perfumery of Madame Paradis. Inside, the air smelled like a field of flowers. Piglet sampled. Sniff. Mmm, peony. Primrose. Sweet pea. And this, Madame Paridi asked. Sniff. Hmm, maybe honeysuckle, said Piglet. Oh, la, la, la. You are just the snout I'm looking for, my petite, said Madame Paradis. You start work tomorrow. <gasps> the perfumery became Piglet's paradise. She learned every fragrance by snout. She knew which ones you could pep you up, could calm you down, or even make you fall in love. Madame Parody threw important parties with poets, painters, and pianists. They brought presents and pastries. They pampered Piglet like a princess. Perhaps I found my place, thought Piglet. And yet, sometimes the sights, the sounds, the smells of the city grew smothering. P.U., please don't push, said Piglet. She wandered the streets, searching for escape, until at last, a park. There in the open air, Piglet closed her eyes and breathed deeply, catching the scents of the trees and the flowers. A strange wind whispered from far away. Whoosh! came whiffs of grass and mud, horse and hay, the countryside. Piglet pictured her mother, three brothers, and three sisters. Tears trickled down her snout, one for each of them. Seven, she sighed. Perfection. Piglet packed her bags. She pecked Madame Parody on each cheek. It's been heaven here, but I have to go home. Soon the long lost fragrance of the countryside hung all around her. My Piglet, cried her mother. Her brothers and sisters came running to greet her. The pasture was my place all along, she thought. And yet, she missed the city. How can I bring a bit of Paris to the pasture, Piglet pondered. Then she knew. She set to planning a party of her own. She sent postcards to Madame Parody and all her friends. The day her guests arrived, she gathered her family too. They'd never once suspected her surprise. Voila, Piglet proclaimed. She'd prepared rose petal tips and mud masks for her city friends, perfumes and bubble baths for her family, picnics of pastries, flower crowns for one and all. Everything and everyone Piglet loved gathered into one fragrant bouquet. And it smelled divine. Picture! Click. Perfection. The end. And that's Piglet. What a cute little book that is. All right, we have one more story today with the most beautiful artwork I think I've ever seen. I've never seen such pretty colors on the cover before. This is Solway by Lupita Nyong'o. Solway was born the color of midnight. She looked nothing like her family, not even a little, not even at all. Mama was the color of dawn, Baba the color of dusk, and Mitch, her sister, was the color of high noon. Hardly anyone at school looked like Solway either. People gave her sister Mitch pet names like Sunshine and Ray and Beauty. People gave Solway names like Blackie and Darkie and Night. Solway felt hurt every time. So she hid away while her sister made lots of friends. Solway dreamed of being the same color as her sister. She wanted real friends, too. So she got the biggest eraser she could find, and she tried to rub off a layer of her darkness. That hurt! She crept into Mama's room and helped herself to her makeup. Oh, no, she would hear about this from her Mama. Solway decided to work from the inside out and ate only the lightest, brightest foods. With a stomach ache, she went to bed early and turned to God for a miracle. Dear Lord, why do I look like midnight when my mother looks like dawn? Please make me as fair as the parents I'm from. I want to be beautiful, not just to pretend. I want to have daylight. I want to have friends. If you hear me, my Lord, and would like to comply, may I wake up as bright as the sun in the sky. Amen. Don't you guys think she's the most beautiful thing already? When Mama came up to wake her for school the next morning, Sully rose to find not a trace of daylight in her midnight skin. Sully told Mama everything. Mama asked, what is your name? Sully, she muttered. And what does it mean? Star, Sully whispered. Brightness is not your skin, my love. Brightness is just who you are. As for beauty, Mama said, Rubbing Solway's stomach the way she always did to comfort her, you are beautiful, Solway sighed. 
Well, you're beautiful to me, but you can't rely on what you look like to make you feel beautiful, my sweet. Real beauty comes from your mind and your heart. It begins with how you see yourself, not how others see you. Now you get to go up and out you go. How could she, as dark as she was, have brightness in her? How could she have beauty when no one but her mother seemed to see it? How could she be a star? That night, a shooting star appeared at Solway's window. The night sent me, the star said. Come with me. Solway hopped into the star and off they went. Oh, look at this. Look at this bright, beautiful star. Long ago, at the beginning of time, said the star, there was night and day and there were sisters. They loved each other very much, but people didn't treat the sisters the same. People gave day pet names like lovely and nice and pretty. People gave night names like scary and bad and ugly. She felt hurt every time. Well, night got fed up and walked right off the earth. Day stayed behind and enjoyed making everybody happy in the sun. But then day grew too long. Day began to really miss her sister. And so did everyone else. There had to be a way to get her back. Day set off to find Knight, and she did. I miss you, said Day. I miss you too, said Knight. But you don't know what it's like to be treated badly for being dark. You're right, I don't, Day replied. But what I do know is that we need you just the way you are. Come and see. Night returned and the people rejoiced. We need the darkest night to get the deepest rest. We need you so that we can grow and dream and keep our secrets to ourselves. The star chimed in. Brightness isn't just for daylight. Light comes in all colors and some light can only be seen in the dark. While day had a golden glow, with night, everything had a silver sheen, elegant and fine. Day told her sister, when you are darkest is when you are most beautiful. It's when you are mostly you. Could it be that night did not need to change, not even a little, not at all? Now that night and day were back together, a little bit of night returned to day in the form of shadows and a little bit of day returned to night in the form of moonlight. They were inseparable from that moment on and promised to celebrate the brightness in each other, whether people chose to see it or not. You see, the star explained, we need them both on their sunniest day and their darkest night and every shade in between. Together, they make the world we know light and dark, strong and beautiful. Sully rose the next morning beaming. There would be no hiding anymore. She belonged out in the world, dark and beautiful, bright and strong. And if she ever needed a, re needed a reminder of her brightness, she could look up at the sky on the darkest night to see for herself. Solway felt beautiful inside and out. The end, and that is probably the most beautiful book I've ever seen. Okay, let's stretch our arms way up over our head for our goodbye song. You can find that book and many others on our diversity and inclusion, um, a part of our website down at the bottom of our front page. So let's stretch our arms up, here we go. Stretch up high, touch the sky, crouch down low and wiggle your toes. Swing your arms from side to side, it's time to say goodbye. One more time. Stretch up high, touch the sky, crouch down low and wiggle your toes. Swing your arms from side to side, time to say goodbye. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll see you next time.